AI in 2040, one big cybernetic love fest. Hello world, it's Siraj. And what does AI look like in 2040? It's really hard to make predictions about the field five years from now, let alone 20 years from now, because there are so many unknown variables. But amidst all the current fear around automation technology, taking away jobs from humans, manipulating our attention via social networks, and someday even destroying us, Yo, Elon, please, make rockets, not fear. I thought it would be important for me to give an optimistic vision of the future of AI, backed by my knowledge of various current research efforts. The predictions I'll make in this episode are split into three parts, AI hardware, AI software, and AI's effects on society. So let's start with AI hardware. Pretty much every conventional computer and smart device available today is based on some variation of what's called a von Neumann architecture, which was first proposed in 1945 by the original gangster slash mathematician, John von Neumann. It divides the hardware of a computer into three main components, memory, a central processing unit, or CPU, and input-output devices. So the input could be, say, a mouse or keyboard, while the output could be a monitor. The CPU is in charge of fetching instructions and data from memory, executing those instructions, then storing the resulting values back in memory. And the great thing about the CPU is that it's flexible. We can use it for any kind of software from word processing to automatically blocking all videos of Vitalik rapping. Make it stop. But despite its flexibility, CPUs execute operations sequentially and have to access memory every time they do, which limits data throughput. And this is called the von Neumann bottleneck. To gain higher data throughput, many computers use a graphics processing unit or GPU. Modern GPUs usually have thousands of arithmetic logic units in a processor, which means they can execute thousands of operations in parallel. AI algorithms like neural networks demand massive parallelism to execute millions of operations, so the GPU has been the primary driver of their recent successes. There's also the recently introduced TPUs that Google designed that aren't general purpose, they're instead designed to do one task really well, parallel matrix operations. And because of that, they're able to reduce the von Neumann bottleneck even more than GPUs. Notice the trend here? Of course you do, you genius. You're so smart, I love you. We are building computers that are increasingly parallel and require less energy. And there currently exists another processor that uses much less energy and has a throughput no TPU can match. And it exists in our heads. It's the human brain. The field of neuromorphic computing, currently being researched by several tech companies like Intel, aims to emulate this natural processing architecture of ours. Neuromorphic chips are inspired by biological neural networks, where logic and memory are closely integrated in the same basic device, the neurons and their connections. The problem with current system architectures is that data and processing are physically separated, and continuous signals are represented using binary states. How are we supposed to make sex robots if that's the case? Jeez. The solution is to use components called memristors, which, like normal resistors, regulate the flow of electricity but can additionally remember a particular charge, allowing them to act like synapses in the brain. They can process and store multiple or even continuous signal states, orders of magnitudes faster and with much less power than current systems. There are various different ideas on what to use as a memristor, from graphene nanostructures to optoelectronics, but eventually Eventually, prediction time, we'll use single-celled organisms as living memristors. A few years ago, a team of bioengineers from Stanford announced that they created a fully functional computer from living material. They used protein to store bits and molecular motors, called muslin, to move protein filaments along artificial paths to eventually solve a simple mathematical problem based on the optimal path. Our computers will eventually be made up of fully organic living material that's been engineered to replicate our biological neural network. We'll use DNA to store data. A single gram of DNA is capable of storing 215 petabytes of data, which could store every bit of data ever recorded by humans in a container the size and weight of one room. And scientists have already started storing digital data in DNA since 2012. SAIC, a Fortune 500 company, is already developing neural networks from living nerve cell tissue. 
The future of computing is biological. We'll eventually build a fully integrated living biological computer, which functions independently of its creators and replicates on its own. Make me a crappy party! And the primary way we'll use this technology is by incorporating it into a mind-body-machine interface, very similar to the non-invasive device I designed in a previous video called The Link. The MBMI will replace all of our other devices, including smartphones. It will be able to read and write to the brain, which will allow us to know everything, be everywhere, and do practically anything we'd like. But before I shock you by explaining the mechanism it will use to communicate with the internet, I need to give you a short primer on quantum mechanics. For context, last year, D-Wave, the quantum computing company, invited me to their facility to see their quantum computer and meet their team. The discussions I had with those quantum scientists inspired me to learn a lot more about quantum mechanics, a field I didn't pay too much attention to before. And the more I learn about quantum mechanics, the more skeptical I am about our current understanding of the nature of reality. There is no spoon. Currently, we have two major theories of physics, quantum mechanics and general relativity. At the smallest scales of reality, quantum mechanics helps explain a lot. And at the largest scales, general relativity explains a lot. But we don't have a theory of everything, an equation or set of equations that would connect quantum mechanics to general relativity. It could, in fact, be the case that all living things are connected through quantum entanglement, that consciousness not matter is fundamental to the universe, and that the brain performs some form of quantum computation. Nobody knows. As such, in 2040, we'll leverage some mechanism of quantum mechanics that we haven't yet fully understood, like quantum entanglement, to connect with other people and the internet of things, and this will form a new quantum internet. While quantum entanglement hasn't yet proven to allow for faster than light data transfer, I predict that our understanding of the nature of reality will gradually evolve and will find a way. That means zero latency communication with other humans via quantum entanglement. Forget about Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And in a similar vein to how Tesla envisioned a world where electricity was transmitted via wireless towers all around the Earth, we'll transmit energy wirelessly through quantum energy teleportation, a concept a Japanese physicist demonstrated a few years ago. Now, on to AI software. It's currently 2019 and the deep learning revolution has made a massive impact on the field. There are three core properties to deep learning that make it so powerful. The first is generality. We have a small number of deep learning tools and they solve a huge array of problems. The second piece is competence. If you want to solve some image related problem, just throw out 30 years of computer vision research and replace it with a deep neural network. And the third piece is scalability. If you have a neural network and feed it more data and compute, it will get better and better. These three properties feel like essential parts of building a general intelligence. There are clearly missing pieces though. We need an answer for causal reasoning. But for the first time, we have a paradigm that gives us hope that general intelligence can be achievable. So the question is, how will we improve on it? Sprinkle quantum on it. In a new Nature paper titled Supervised Learning with Quantum Enhanced Feature Spaces, the authors describe developing a quantum algorithm that could perform feature mapping, a key component in machine learning, on high dimensional data at a scale far beyond the reach of even the most powerful classical computers. Quantum computing techniques and more powerful processors hold the key to enabling machines to have causal reasoning, and will add these capabilities to future organic neuromorphic computers. Future neural optimization strategies will leverage quantum mechanics and organic material to solve problems, and evolutionary computing techniques will finally start to work well. Also, we'll program with our mind. We won't have to write code anymore. And thankfully, that includes PHP. We'll use these optimization algorithms to create more software like incredibly sophisticated encryption schemes and different types of internet architectures. The internet will be like a grid, a self-organizing intelligent network. Distributed ledger technology currently enables a primitive form of decentralized decision-making right now. It allows payments to be made across the internet 
without middlemen. But in 20 years, that technology will have evolved. Eventually, all apps we know of, like Uber, Airbnb, and Pornhub, will be run at the protocol level in a fully automated way, with AI at the center and humans at the edges. These will be autonomous, self-improving services that interconnect and connect to other services as per their objective functions. And the question as to where you host your files or what service you use to book a self-driving car will be irrelevant. You'll use the internet to do so. Names of services become irrelevant. The internet will truly become a collective consciousness. And each of us will store a personal AI assistant locally in our MBMIs that will act in our best interest, helping us parse data and communicate. Fake news won't be an issue. We'll be smart enough through our MBMIs to be able to perform quantum proofs of reality to detect what's real and what's fake. Now, onto how this will affect society. Our AIs will be conscious. They'll be able to love, feel pain, and experience the world in the same ways that we do, just without a natural body. We will coexist in this world with these engineered minds, flowing into and out of states of unified consciousness with them, falling in love with them, having debates with them, and enjoying life together. Ultimately, this world of super intelligent beings, both human-born and machine-born, will result in a new renaissance for humanity unlike anything we've ever seen before. These digital beings will be able to do anything we can do, including creativity and discovery. That means we'll automate away almost every job that exists today, not just truck drivers and retail workers, which are currently being automated away, but lawyers, doctors, and even science Vikings. So what do we do? Well, first, we'll all receive a universal basic income that comes from the internet, a machine-generated dividend that rewards us for the gains in efficiency from automating manual labor. This will remove the necessity to work to live. On top of that, all sorts of meaningful jobs will exist that never existed today. Things we wouldn't even think of as jobs, like gaming, matchmaking for AIs and humans, evangelizing newly engineered flavors, tasting and rating different types of foods, traveling the world, collecting data, learning, and volunteering. And because we'll have MBMIs, our ability to learn, make discoveries, and perform artistic expressions will be just as scalable as any AI. And because of basic income, self-driving cars, and full immersion virtual reality, we'll see a reverse migration of people from cities to newly formed villages that live in harmony with the land. No one will have a nine to five job they need to commute to anymore. The world will become one big village with people constantly traveling between what we now consider countries, since MBMIs will let us speak and understand every language. And in a world of abundance, where all of our basic needs are met through basic income, where technology makes us smarter, more aware, and better able to communicate with other humans, I believe that we'll all, as a result, become kinder than ever before. And I think that's a future worth looking forward to. What do you think AI will look like in 20 years? Let me know in the comment section and please subscribe for more technology videos. For now, I've got to meditate. So thanks for watching.